Okay, our second assignment, we're going to continue with compositing, but we're going to practice it towards a different purpose, right? And so if you go to your assignment sheets in our Canvas course, where we just finished compositing a fantasy landscape, now we're going to create a living figurative element, something that we expect to be able to move and that has some logic to its anatomy. And we can always look at the, the one page, just kind of rundown description of the assignment, what the requirements are. It's always a good thing to do. These are the minimum requirements. We can always exceed them in terms of size, in terms of how many uh, resources we use. And basically we want at least five found creature compositions. So for this, we're not going to use uh, landscape photos. We're gonna use animal photos, right? We're gonna use maybe food photos, maybe vegetation photos, you know, individual object photos, which sometimes can be higher quality, but you also have to be mindful of the focus pools they might have, right? So if they're really blurry on the outside edge, we want everything to be in focus if possible. The, what makes it harder is not only do you have to find the kind of reference you want, like say of hyena ears, but you have to find them an angle that works with your other references, right? Because everything needs to look like it is on a body that makes sense. So there is a challenge of these. And for the fun of it, we looked at basic shapes when we did our shape composition, right? The thing that really sells a fantasy creature is not how much detail there is. It's not how many colors are in the eye or how many like horns are coming out of the back. It's the overall shape that it makes, the silhouette, the shadow it casts on a wall. You want that shadow it casts to already tell you a lot about the creature. And so that's something that takes a lot of time for character designers to, to learn and animators. And, but it is uh, shown pretty well in the evolution of Pokemon design over the years. They've had good years and bad years, but in general, there's a little link in that assignment sheet to this Pokedex. You can use any Pokedex you like, right? But you can tell just from these little icons that just the silhouette, if you squint and just see them as kind of blobs, just their shape tells you a lot about that creature's personality, how they move, what the, the focus is of their, of their design, right? And it's only, it's only much later that they get a little overcomplicated, especially with legendaries and things and energy beasts and putting armor on lightning and things like that. So the simpler they are, usually the more effective they are. But even these kind of like crazy ones, they just suggest a whole lot. And so I want you to be inspired by one of these. It doesn't mean I want you to make a realistic version of a Pokemon. You can do that. People have done that. It's fun but it's to get inspired by kind of the shapes and what would this actually be like, right? To have this kind of ax-like horn fin coming out of the head. Uh, what kind of creature reference might I use to create that? What would my version be? My thinking is if I use something like this, and I, I might, maybe I'll use this one, you know? Um, I'm thinking it would need a much stouter neck and a heavier chest to support all that weight that's on the top of the head. You know, I'm thinking, what could that fin be used for? Because here it doesn't even look like it's defensive. It just looks like it's decorative, right? So I'm going to think maybe it imitates a shark or something. This is a amphibious animal, you know, lots of different things. So you let it inspire you. That's a good place to start. And that's because some of you want like horror monsters. Some of you want like the next baby Yoda kind of creature. Some of you, you know, just want to use cats in some form. This will push you out of your, your comfort zone a little bit and, and still invite a lot of your ideas. Because this is my, my, one of my son's favorites. That's just, that's a crazy design, right? But it makes you think if I really wanted to make a creature design of that, I'm not going to be looking at lots of animals. I, I might be looking at some beetles and things, but I'd also be looking at gemstones, at obsidian, at you know different materials that could be really interesting to make a creature out of. So it gets you thinking a little bit more broadly. We don't want just another kind of green humanoid alien, you know, as a fantasy creature. We wanted something that really reflects your interests. Any kind of fantasy creature will do. So that is the assignment sheet. Um, the criteria 
It has to have five reference images that are blended together to form a convincing hybrid of different animals blended into one. So I use the term chimera here from Greek mythology. Um, you can have multiple heads, but that has to make sense in the anatomy, right? It has to have enough musculature to like hold on to the heads. And it needs to feel three-dimensional and then it can move because you will have the option to animate these later. And we are going to sketch out our initial idea first um, once we have inspiration, and then we're going to find reference based on our sketch instead of basing our sketch on our reference like we did for our landscape. Okay, so if we look at instructional examples, this is how we're going to sketch, right? I'll usually take at least two different Pokemon to be um, inspired by. So maybe, why not? I'll just take these two. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I need to pose them that way. But what I do want you to notice is that the way that they pose them is in a way that's descriptive of that creature, right? Often in three-quarter view or in side view, you know, it's a way that shows the full anatomy and it really shows the proportions. So when we do ours, we want to sketch it in a way that really shows it off. So here I'm combining these two kind of creatures into my own kind of vision. And then I may be making little notes. Okay, maybe I use a chameleon for that. Maybe I use a, a turtle for that. Maybe I use an elephant for that, right? And then when we actually compose it all together, it's going to be our own thing. It's going to be completely our own thing. So don't worry about being too uh, limited by the Pokemon, right? I think those all became this. Maybe not. It's hard to remember. <laughs> it can be something that flies. It can be something that walks. It can be something that lives underground. But we want to show it head to toe, right? So sometimes students get into trouble because they want some sort of like eastern dragon, long snake-like form. That means you need to composite the entire body, right? You don't get to just hide some of it. So we're not just doing close-ups. We're doing the entire body. And you can throw, you know, lots of different types of reference into this. Okay. And then with assignment three, which will be a quick turnover assignment, we're going to composite that creature into our landscape. But the trick here is to make it all look believable, like it all works. And the sketch is really important to that. Understanding, you know, how the skeleton works. So I'm going to try to demo that a little bit with sketching. So let's uh, get started. So you're going to do this in your sketchbooks, but I will do it in Photoshop. And if I'm going to be inspired by these two Pokemon, then I have a way already to kind of begin my sketch, thinking about proportions a little bit. This is not the kind of assignment where you just want to throw everything at it. You don't want to have eight arms, four wings, 12 horns, three tails, right? Six heads. You want to kind of focus it on where what's the most interesting. That's going to give you the better design. So by combining two Pokemons as inspiration, each of them has a focal point, right? I have to make then creative decisions about what mine will be. Okay, so sketching this. This is just like my, my sketchbook opened up, double page spread. Turn my opacity on my brush down a little bit. So that's where my sketchbook is, all right? And the first thing I want to do is look at my reference. I'll go ahead and bring it in. You can see how just our basic compositing helps us <laughs> in all forms of digital art, even just with what's called the ideation phase, coming with, up with our idea. So as I start to sketch it, I might already have ideas that I might sketch down. <coughs> about what these kind of things could be, right? And you should pay attention to those. Materials, things that you would find reference for. But the most important thing is to, to sketch out the anatomy. 
So to make it a little clear, I'm going to do it in blue. And this will just be the, the basic shapes that I sketch. So I need a head. The head's usually going to start with a circle, right? Even if it's an invertebrate, when we do creature design, we usually start the head with a circle and then build shapes on top of that, right? So for a vertebrate creature, that's your cranium. That's the thing that encases your brain. And then you have a mandible, a jaw, that comes off of that. So if I'm going to kind of match this design, the mandible is squarish, more cat-like, you know, coming out the front like that from the mandible or from the cranium. If I'm using this design, it's all kind of hidden underneath this big triangular shell. So again, just basic shapes. And if I want to kind of combine the two, I think I like the idea of maybe something a little bit more cat-like, a little stouter underneath kind of this triangular hood. Now notice this is drawn from the side. This is three-quarter view. I'm going to find better quality reference in photos that give more dimension and better use of light if I make it all three-quarter view. So instead of just the shapes, I'm also going to add in create an eraser here I can use. I'm also going to add in what are called uh, action lines, which give me the direction of the head. So we start with the head because that's the focal part of a creature. And then we, I'll show you in red, oops, these action lines that show the midpoint, right? So now I have the eye line is going to go across like that. And the midpoint of the mouth the nose, you know, going down the face will go like that. And so now I'm more at a three-quarter view, kind of like this. Attached to the head, we have a spine. So that spine, I have to decide how I'm going to do it. Instead of the shark fin, he's going to have this kind of big spiked thing. I like the idea of the spikes. It's kind of samurai-ish. Um, but he needs a thicker neck. So I'm going to push his spine back behind the head instead of down underneath. So I'm making a change. And it comes down from the head and then just becomes something, right? I, I have to decide what. The spine is just like a necklace that other parts of the anatomy hang on. So next, I need to find the collarbone, the thing that connects the shoulders. And you can see the collarbone very clearly here and then these crazy arms. I'm not going to try to, that's not going to hold up. But what I'll do is I'll use a collarbone here and then maybe have really strong forearms. And I like the idea of the big claws. So I'm going to separate it into these three shapes, right? So upper arm, lower arm, hands. Upper arm, lower arm, hands. And it's not like I'm just going to use obsidian and like recreate every finger. No, I'm going to try to find an anatomical structure that matches that hand, right? Something close to it and build with that. Now, now that I have the collarbone, I know the width of the chest. And that gives me the space for the muscles for big arms like this and, a, and something heavy on the head. So I'm going to have a thick neck, a big chest, which is pretty similar to both of them. So you want to actually draw in that rib cage that big chest, and you can put an action line down, down the middle of it to remind you the angle we're seeing things at, because that's the angle we're going to want to look for reference at. And then the next thing on the spine, I know this is like a lot of drawing, <laughs> but you can all do it. It's still just basic shapes, and it's about the arrangement of shapes. It's not about how detailed or how good your drawing is. It's how helpful it's going to be. But we're going to put a pelvis on it. Not quite as small as this pelvis, but smaller than the collarbone. And on the sides of each pelvis, we have the, the joints for the hips. And then I have to decide what kind of legs it will have. And I could do the, the general kind of four-legged animal leg. They're going to be quite a bit smaller, right? And the rear legs of four-legged animals, this portion here is the foot. It's like our foot, right? So the anatomy isn't diff very different than our human anatomy. And then I have to decide if I want a tail or not. If I do want a tail, I think I want it to be just kind of a, a curt little shape. You know, maybe something like that, keeping some of the hard edges. And then what I want to have fun with is the neck. Thinking about how thick the neck is, maybe I'll change color here, because this is now flesh on top. So let's do it with green. 
And you can definitely sketch in color if it helps. 